Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. Today we're going to work on how you can find the partial fraction decomposition for a rational expression. This is basically a method of taking a rational expression and splitting it out into smaller rational expressions. So we're basically breaking up the fraction. Right? In order to start this process, we have to know what the new denominators are going to be. And they come from some of these original denominators in our original rational expression. Okay? So in my new denominators, I want to make sure that I have a piece for each of the factors. And since I have two factors, I'm basically going to have two fractions here. Now notice what type of denominators we have. These are both linear, so it tells me that my tops will be a constant of some sort. Now I don't know exactly what they're going to be. This is why I'm labeling them as A and B. But we'll be able to figure them out in just a little bit. So, in order to figure out A and B, I imagine, okay, if I had to put these guys back together, well, they must equal the original somehow. Let's see. If I really wanted to get these back together, first I would need a common denominator. So I'd multiply this fraction on the top and bottom by x plus 5, and this one would need to multiply on the top and bottom by an x plus 8. Let's just focus on the tops for a bit and see what exactly I'm talking about. So. The fraction on the left, this one, would multiply on the top and bottom by an x plus 5. That means a would get multiplied by x plus 5. And the b would get multiplied by an x plus 8. So this is essentially what would be on the top of the fractions if you put them back together. Now this expression must equal the original numerator. Okay? This is actually going to help us figure out our A and B in just a bit. All right, so I want to start making some comparisons, but it looks like I got some things trapped inside parentheses. Let's go ahead and start distributing, just so we can start freeing things up just a little bit. So let's see, A times X, AX. A times 5, 5A. B times X, BX. And B times 8, 8B. Now look at this, and notice how some of our terms have an x, and some of them do not have an x, like the 5a and the 8b. Let's go ahead and start grouping together the terms that have an x and the terms that do not have an x. All right, it's looking pretty good. And just to, to make the comparisons just a little bit better, I'm actually going to factor out the x from this a and b here. All right, now you're looking at that going, okay, what's the point? What, why have you done that? But again, we're trying to make comparisons between this, which is the top when you put these two fractions together, and the original top. Let's first look at the x's. So on the right side, I know that a plus b times x must equal this 11x over here. So that tells me something very specific about a and b. It says that, all right, if you take a and you add it to b, then it better equal 11. All right, let's look at the parts that do not have any x's. So when these are put together, they must equal 64. So if you have 5a plus 8b, it must equal 64. Now from those conditions, you can see we have a, a system of equations. Now we can solve this system, and it should give us our values for a and b. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this system using something like the elimination method. So I'll take the first equation, multiply through by a negative 5. All right. And the second equation, I'm not going to change whatsoever. And let's go ahead and add these two equations together. Let's see, negative 5a plus 5a, those drop away. Negative 5b plus 8b, we have to say positive 3b equals a negative 55 plus 64. It looks like a positive 9. 
So solving this will give us that b is equal to 3. Now once we know what b is, you could substitute that in way up here. So a plus 3 equals 11. Well, that means the only thing that a can be is it better equal 8. So we now know what a and b are. Now remember where these originally came from. These were the tops of the fractions that we were splitting things up into. So this tells us when we take our original fraction and we're trying to split it up, that it will split up into 8 over x plus 8 plus 3 over x plus 5. So this is our partial fraction decomposition. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.